everyone, happy March and welcome to this video. So today I'm going to be embroidering a blouse in a very Tessa style. So I thought I would share my process of that. Uh, the idea is I've got this vintage blouse that I recently bought from a flea market and I'm going to do a flower on each side of the shirt. So it's going to be symmetrical but not and that's a style I like to do and keep coming back to when I don't want to work too hard on coming up with a super creative concept with symbols and stuff. My go-to is flowers but I want it to be a bit more creative than just a mirrored flower that's exactly the same. There's a time and a place for that but you know for this project it's gonna be two orchids that are different varieties. I've been on an orchid kick for a while, like for the past couple of years. I think I tend to have flower phases where when I first started embroidering, I was doing a lot of poppies, started doing a ton of roses. Obviously while I'm doing that, I'm also like trying out different things, but now I've been really interested in embroidering a lot of orchids. They're all so different and they also have like an otherworldly look to them in the way that like insects do sometimes I think and they also have like a modern art kind of feel to it I don't know the shapes are so interesting so anyways I will get into the project it's pretty straightforward the two flowers that I want to do are the Renanthera Monachica orchid that one is a reddish orchid well it's like a pinkish red with darker red spots all over it i especially love when orchids kind of look like an animal print i think that's really cool so that's one that i want to do and i haven't decided i think i'm gonna do some kind of lady slipper possibly in like greens and purples I'm going to iron out the blouse that I'll be working on and lint roll it before I sit down to start stitching. Okay, so I'm going to start drawing first. I want them to take up kind of the space, pretty much the whole uh, fronts of the shirt. The flower can go a bit above the bust and then the stem and leaves. So I'm going to start on this side with the red orchid. It actually doesn't seem like it's very common for one of these to be by itself. They're often clustered together, but you know what? It doesn't have to be scientifically accurate. It's just embroidery. It's a bit of a fantasy, but I will try to get the leaves right, which looks like they're a bunch of long, thin leaves. <laughs> So now for the lady slipper, I want these to be at the same height. I'll start the center uh, about here. The reference image I'm looking at has really curvy petals that are very cool and I'd like to figure out how to replicate them. Cool. it's got a very dark stalk. Well, wait, I think there's a little petal behind it too. Okay, now I'm going to grab 
what threads I think I'm gonna need. I've actually been in the process of trying to organize my clump of thread into this very nice briefcase full of organized threads. Um, I'm going to ignore the clump and just kind of go through this one. Okay, for this orchid, oh my God, I just knocked over a ton of beads. Okay. For this orchid, I know I want the spots to be a cherry red, like a bright red, but not too orangey, something more like deeper. These look great. The base of the flower, I want this one to have kind of like a peachy yellow base. Although I do see maybe a t some touches of a creamy yellow. I like this one. Oh yeah, and this is perfect. Yeah, I'm gonna use these as the base of the flower. The inside of it has a few details that I'm going to have a pop of this magenta. Uh, there's some white detail, some brighter yellow. This is good for that. The leaves are green. Got some new green threads the other day because green is the color that I run out of the most. So I'll put some green aside. So that looks good for that flower. And now for the lady slipper, I'm not totally sure what color story I want to do. Since the shirt is white, I don't want the flower to be based in white. The background of the flower is going to be like a yellowish green. I like this color for the background. I want something even paler to go with this. Mm. This flower is also going to have spots of pink so i'm gonna grab a variety of shades of pinks i also want some dark shades of purple this is like a dark brown this is an eggplant i have some more green i'm gonna set aside more random shades of purple because i'm not entirely sure what i want to do with this one some shades of yellow too to go with the greens and then it looks like the stem is a very dark green or even brown or black for the, the patterns of the leaves i'll incorporate some lighter shades of green. Now we can start stitching. I'm beginning with the background of the petals, which I'm going to stitch with a bit of yellow at the center and then peach for the rest of the petal. I'm doing my best to neatly work around those blob shapes because I'm going to fill it in with the red as soon as I'm done with the background. Now that the background is done, I'm going to fill in the spots with the red thread. Here's how this looks. There is slight puckering that I hope I can iron out, but I'm pretty happy with the overall look. Now I'm going to do the details inside. All right, the flower is done and now I just have to embroider the stem and leaves. All right, it's the next day and I'm ready to get a bit more work done. I just want to add a center thread to these leaves and then I'll be ready to start on the lady slipper orchid. As you can see, I have to work with a bulky band-aid situation on my left thumb. The night before I cut myself chopping vegetables and it's nothing too serious. I think it's gonna heal in a week, but that's a second kitchen knife injury I gave myself within a month's time span. So it's definitely a wake up call to get safer knives or sharpen my knives. 
Anyways, this lady slipper orchid has many parts to it, so I'll talk about what I'm doing. Because a flower like this has many parts and details, it helps me to go bit by bit, starting with the backgrounds of the petals and then going in with details on top of that. For most of the details, I did a reduction in the amount of thread from six strands down to three, and that just helps me get the details finer. While I'm working, I will look at a reference picture here and there to help me make some choices, but for the most part, I'm kind of just doing what feels right to me and uh, what is the easiest option while still being effective and looking like the orchid. It's the afternoon. I started this project yesterday, did a little bit of work this morning. Now I'm about to finish the top. Um, here's what it looks like so far. I just have to do the leaves down here, which initially I was going to do two shades of green, but since I did a kind of eggplant colored uh, stem, I think I'm gonna do green with little touches of the dark purple. I don't have much more to say about that. I'm making some coffee, which I'm gonna go grab. Today I feel like I'm moving a lot slower than yesterday, and I'm less enthusiastic to film, but sometimes it's like that. I think it's because I cut my thumb and it's very awkward to do the movements of stitching and stuff but I'm almost done and then my plan is to take some photos so that I could try to sell this on my website and post them to Instagram and whatnot <laughs> And here's how the shirt came out. I'm very happy about the composition and the colors that I chose for these orchids. I did have some puckering around the flowers, which I think has to do with the shirt's fabric, which is a rayon acetate. I think it's a lot easier to avoid puckered fabric if you go with a linen or cotton shirt, but I think it came out pretty cute. I want to give a big thank you to everyone watching these videos. I appreciate it so much. And then also thank you to my patrons if you'd like to support these videos with a tip, my Patreon is patreon.com slash Tessa Perlow. I hope everyone out there has a great rest of your week, and I'll be back soon with another video. Bye!